plastic, not so beautiful, but it was homemade, you know that. <laughs> right, thank you. Right. It was just a way of showing uh, the organization of brain, the way it works. Well, I could use, like, it's better when we do this in a, in a plain area. All right, so there is a dolphin. Ah, there is a dolphin. Very good. Now, I like to illustrate in front of the class. There, I will get more green ones. I'll get this different. Okay, like there, sorry. There are, it's difficult to hold them. So this is why we need a place. So here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plastic bags. The way we structure sentence is like this. We give students a chance of organizing the sentence in their brains. All right, give them a chance. Because for us, it seems so simple. Oh, there is, there is, there is. But for them, no, they need that time. And in this experience, I had those very low self-esteem students that they really got engaged. They found an opportunity. They said, oh, I must, I can hold it. Huh. Because if you put it in the front of the class, who can have this opportunity? You and some other two but if you give us game sets for many groups everybody has this opportunity and also they develop working in groups and they feel confident because they say well i am making a sentence i am speaking and for example this is the way i give students an oral grade because they speak in pairs groups or trios and then yes Yes, they see the sentence organized and they have this to organize in their brains. Because for us, it's so, it's so easy, it's so obvious, but for them, maybe it's not. And also, it's very concrete, right? Concrete, yes. We need to talk about concrete. If you have a person with attention deficit and you think about, what can you see in the picture? There is, well, the person will be busy in the class, running in the class. But if they get the first one, there um, are uh, five bottles. This is the way my students go. This is the way they go. They, they get really excited. Three words, three. Yes, three words, three rods for the sentence. Yes, three words, three rods for the sentences. Uh, this is also for us to know about the contrast. In Portuguese, we use have instead of there is, there are. Do you know that? When I ask my students, how do you say in English, tem um carro na rua, they say have a car in the street. I don't know about yours. No, yes. But yes. this is why I like to contrast Portuguese so many times. I have 10 years. Oh, so you know this. Yeah, mine are exactly 8, 9 and 10. So you know what, what I talk about. And also a way of having them uh, describing, is not having, but say, uh, showing what there is, there are. Why am I teaching this? Because in that context, I needed them to describe the book. I had an objective. It's not that I said, well, today let's do something. Okay, let's study there is, there are. No, I had an objective, having them describe. And in their tests, I had pictures and I asked, describe the pictures. All right, this is what we've been talking about as contextualized practice. Let's move forward. This we have done, we have done, we have done. Yes, yeah, rods, structuring sentences to organize brain. Rods, you put escala cuisinaire. There is also material dourado. There are so many names people use for mathematics. The most common is mathematics. But then languages, they have been using them as well. Rods, what are those? Well, if we have pictures, we don't need to explain. 
so much. All right, they well, uh, plastic or wooden blocks, one square centimeter or more. Uh, recommended that you get some for yourself. They are compact, portable, relatively inexpensive. I got this from donation. I don't know if you can believe that. Uh, but they are the most versatile teaching aid I know of any price, right? Because with these very simple materials, you can use all your creativity to help your students with concrete sentence making right okay i have to control the time well another one introducing vocabulary old style do you remember presentation practice production some 20 years ago and elaborating sentences game two in one yeah i'm sorry if what i'm telling you is not so new but that makes me so happy and my students too and for that, I might, I might try to convince you. Well, let's see the difference. Okay, let's present the, the vocabulary. What do you know about a classroom? The best ones. This is a pencil case. The other best one. Uh, this is an erase. The, the other ones. Yeah, we've got 25 people. What can we do with them? We've got 25. Uh, the presentation, practice and production. Again, I will talk about a case study uh, in which I, I don't teach for a bilingual context, but it's a content and language integrated learning. So then I have to unite a very, very small knowledge about science with language knowledge. So look, the case studies teaching landforms and water forms describing characteristics i found in google and i don't know why they the person considered a river a landform if river is made of water well no problems i am introducing landforms so then i go there if i ask my students hello what do you think landform is no one would answer open questions what are they useful for Nobody would answer. If you, there's no way. Uh, but then uh, I will be showing this picture. I give the answer. So how can I teach not giving the answer, not speaking a question that few of them would be able to answer? How can I make it a process of having them discover? Well, student-centered way of introducing vocabulary. I could ask what is a landform, what is a water form. They could talk in, uh, in groups, yes? But then we are going to try to discover together. Let's try. Again, we are going to play a game. Wow. So please, I will get that old set of games. You are going to be my nine or 10 year old students trying to discover and define and make sentences what is this game like memory do you know that people with dyslexia the most they have to to work on is memory in contrast people with autism they have very nice memory i don't know if you deal with them but i do so autistics wow they have a memory better than ours but then uh, uh, disle people with dyslexia, they need some help with the memory. Good. I have here two, uh, the game we are going to organize into two columns. Of course, in the class I would show on the floor, I would play modeling. Yeah, because giving instruction to children is useless. Maybe for me, they don't listen. <laughs> so I model. I model with another student. So in this case, you don't need modeling, but you are going to divide into two columns. And the rule is, when you have, whenever you get a card, you have to speak. An ocean is a... An ocean is a... Water form or land form. You have to make a sentence for each slip of paper you get. Pairs or trios, let's start. 
Yes, if you want, you can use this space. We have lots of space here. Yes, we can make a mess, but then we, we put everything back in place. All right, Lyrica, she allows us, all right? Yes, she allowed so everybody can. Well, Lyrica, if this is my first time here, I'm feeling so much comfortable. Be careful when you call me the next one, all right? <laughs> Be careful when you call me the next. <laughs> Would you like to come here with us? All right, you're okay. Do you need another game set? Yes. I have more game sets, so many game sets. Oh, we had you already. You already have. You have one. You have one for everybody. Great, everybody. That's great. Would you like to check the game set? No, that's all right. <laughs> all right. Yes, it's a memory game. You can make two columns, one with pictures, the other with sentences. Yes? And you match them. Very good, very good. Yes, a forest is a land for Yes, and you can then put the, the cards upside down. And great, because you play memory game. Oh, but then they are not going to be together. No, you can scramble. Oh, after that. You can. An ocean is very good. <laughs> do you know? They say Foz do Iguaçu. Foz do Iguaçu. <laughs> yes, isn't it? M amazing, fantastic. Well, uh, it's a veil. A veil. I think. I don't know. Oh, really? So beautiful, the, the picture. What is this? I like you, the questions you're asking. Yes? Well, again, well, I'm trying to clap, but then the book, I have to hold it, so we clap, 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 stop, stop, stop. 
we clap 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 stop 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 some people say the moment you have to ask them to stop is the moment they're having fun because if the fun has already gone then they're and then you stop and it's all right please one minute more and then you are asking well Lillian if you've told us that your students are nine years old how can they discover water farmland for a volcano how can they discover a river this is the moment they're going to read the book I give them the opportunity if you don't know try to check in the book they have never seen this passage before it's the new the the new contact the new text so here they can check oh a mountain ah oh, yes a mountain a volcano oh now i know the volcano okay so they want to be the winners so they are going to read because they want to be the winners not because you've asked them open your books let's discover you see they really discover this way and they discover in a way they won't forget anymore it's not a way I'm presenting, I'm asking them to repeat. But then, of course, if there is a moment they need to repeat because their pronunciation is not so good, we can have that moment. But the first thing is let them discover by themselves. Give them the opportunity of discovering by themselves. Here they can see a desert, the ocean, ocean. For example, how can they know the difference between lake and river? For them, this is very difficult. So they would open the book. We would see that a river is a flowing of water and lake is surrounded by land and they would get the definitions, all right? And then, suppose on their tests, I'm going to ask them, what is the definition of lake? What is the, the definition of um, volcano? I'm going to ask them for the definitions. I have another game in which I put definitions like an information gap activity. In one, I have the questions, the other, the answers, and they go asking each other. Well, I will go. Let's go to the next. Yes. All right. Yes. And then we have a moment of conclusion. It's really important to have a moment of conclusion. This could be done as a worksheet, as homework. All right. The class was that, but the other, the homework and the reading, they can do by themselves. But the discovering, they needed teacher scaffolding. A conclusion moment is always present. Uh, another, another way of old style presentation and game two in one. Right? Remember, uh, I don't know if nowadays, but maybe when I started teaching, we used to show flashcards, introducing vocabulary, where everybody. Do you remember if students used to look at you? Because sometimes they don't look, I don't know, we need more things to call their attention. Yes, for example, I'm another, another case study. These students, they are eight years old, very young learners, all right? I'm going to teach them activities because I want them to know some verbs. Because there will be a project, I will want them to make a profile, talk about their, uh, their personal information, and also to talk about what they like to do, the activities they do everyday life. This is my context. So how can I promote classes in a way the results are going to be students writing and having the capacity of talking about themselves? Then I, I would show draw, draw. Very good, repeat, draw, all right. Paint, paint. very good, paint, very nice. Read books. read books, very good, read books. Okay, everybody learning? Everybody learning words or sentences? Actions or sentences? Maybe actions. Because of the verbs. Yes, they are the verbs, but we need to make sentences. And we, uh, when we elaborate sentences, we introduce vocabulary and we have students speak. So it's like I say two in one. 
you, you have to do one thing, but you do two, because the result's much better. So here, activities we like to do at school. I happy face, I like to, and I don't like to. Uh, there is a missing I in both of them, sorry. So then I would tell the class, well, let's talk about what we like to do, what we don't like to do, and I put on the board the happy face, I like to. Even you can say, I like to, or I don't like to. And then I would display the activities. And then I would make a pair work. Uh, I will model now. Could, could anybody be my pair right now? Mm, I wish I could have a pair. Just maybe I stay near you. Could you stay there or here? Where, where do you prefer? Come here, please. Your name, please. Isaac. Isaac, come on. Yes, Isaac. Well, let's talk together about the activities we do at school. I, I don't like to add numbers, but I like, I, I like to play store. Do you see I have to make a sentence? It's not like, add numbers, make a store. I like to play store. I don't like to draw. I like to paint. I like to read books. I like to go on field trips. I like to listen to music. I like to play on the slide. I like to play on the swing. I like to play hopscotch and I like to have fun. And you, Isaac, please. I don't like to add numbers. Right, just just this. <laughs> Neither do I. I like to play store. Very good. I like to draw. Good. I like to paint. Mm -hmm. I don't like to read books. Okay. I like to go on few trips. All right. I like to listen to music. I like to play on this slide. Um, I like to play on this on the swing. I don't like to play hopscotch. I don't like. I like so much to have fun. Very good. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you very much. I have modeled. Now it's time for the working pairs or trios. Please go in pairs or trios. Talk to each other. Making sentences, okay? I like to eat. Oh, I forgot to put I like to eat. Sorry. No, I, it's not that I don't like it, that I can't. Uh -huh. You don't like the bell. You don't like the bell. <gasps> In my school, they, they quit this. Yes, they're not ringing the bell anymore. Everybody knows the, the we start clapping our hands so they know they have to go back. <laughs> That's so alarming. <laughs> Great! That's our plan. One day. Yes, that's our plan. Okay, thank you for the game set.
we clap, 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 stop, 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 clap, 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 stop, stop, stop. After the pair work, we could learn. Uh, now I think that in the end of the teaching, my students will be able to write an email to people from other country. After all the things we've done, they are going to say what they like to do. They will talk about personal information because they can make sentences, right? But then, uh, let me see if this is the right... No, I will just show away now about the, the third person singular. I could say, let me get the I and let me get the he, eyes black, he can be the green. I, he, like, and yes, here. For example, well, I need the... Oh, here. I won't let things fall any longer. Then I would say, I, I, I like to... Paint. I like to paint. Isaac, do you like to paint? Mm, wait. So, he. <laughs> I'll do what you do. He likes to paint. Yes. <laughs> Yes, uh, I will do it again. I like to, uh, let me see. I like to listen to music. Isaac, please say you like to listen to music. Isaac, do you like to, don't, no, another one you like. Tell me, what's the other one? Uh, have fun. Isaac, I like to have fun. And you, do you like to have fun? Ah, so I, I, oops. I like to have fun. How about Isaac? He, 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 he's green, okay? Uh -huh. Yes, let's not talk about gender or anything, but green is for boys, let's say. Uh -huh. He likes uh -huh. to have fun. Is that a box for third person singular now? Do you see that? This, when my students learn this, they would go forever making the right thing. Yes, because this... And I, I really exaggerate, because who doesn't exaggerate? We have to teach. And then what would be the follow-up? I would go again, we would go again in pairs or trios, like we talk to each other, now we make sentences about each other, yeah? We can say this is drilling, okay, I accept it can be drilling, but the best thing is that they are really making sentences. They are making complete sentences. A variation, a variation, a variation for this. Uh, for these same things, because young learners, you cannot teach a lot of content. It's a few content, a lot of practice. Repetition. Yes, repetition and variation. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you teach so many things, nobody remembers. And they understand. And they understand. Yes, I, yes they understand. When I put here, he... And then when I get the, the red one and I say she and I get the small one for the S. Uh -huh. And then if I want to say uh, likes and doesn't, I can use other ones that represent negative things for their brain understanding. And then I would have this uh, as a mind game. Do you play mind game with your students? Yes? Do you used to play mime game? Do you know miming? Yes, because in my classes, we go outside the classroom we, with this just movement. It's really working out. I love doing a uh, mime game. So the mime game is you have to guess and have the opportunity of having somebody guess too. So if I say... Can you see I am elaborating a sentence? Mm, it's I. It's like, or mm, I. 
don't like. Can you see? You are giving the messages to their brains to elaborate sentences. Yes? So... Of course, the best one will raise the hand. Who is the best one in this class to raise the hand and answer? Who could... Could it be the best one? You would answer, wouldn't you? And what do you want to practice? Do you want to practice with the pronoun you? With the pronoun he? With she? Do you want to practice third person singular? Let's practice third person singular. So you could say, Lillian is a girl, so she likes to listen to music. Yes, if I make a game uh, in pair, you guess what I represent because you have to make a complete sentence and then I guess what you make the gesture and I make a complete sentence would you give it a try just once mm -hmm. for the miming okay we stop the camera nobody's going to see you there's a place uh. there's a place would you like to give it a try mm -hmm. raise your hand if you would give it a try N uh, no, I think not today. Okay, another day. That's uh, it. Maybe after the, the coffee break. Uh, oh, we're not having coffee break. Uh, Maybe another day. But, but this is so funny when we do miming. It's so funny because they have an objective. And those people who are very energetic, they need to make movements. They can't stay sitting in a classroom. They benefit so much from miming because they, they want their friends to guess. And then the friend makes a complete sentence with the third person S. All right? Okay, let's go. We've been talking about how many students we've got in a class, with pair work, with mind game, third person singular. We've been showing that, all right? Now, sometimes we have three, sometimes we have 30, right? But if we have three, we sit down with them, we play with them. If we have 30, we model with one, like I model with Isaac. And then they go in pairs or trios, and the teacher goes around them. All right, we've done this. Yes. Again, talking about real situations with cuisinaire rods. Yeah. The, the worst thing is when the teacher, hello class. How are you? How was the weekend? They would say, normal. <laughs> I had a group, 17-year-old students, that they would, every day they would say, normal. Then I told them, usual day, usual. Of course, if I, if I ask them this open question, I, will, I won't lead them to produce sentences. I won't. I won't. Maybe because we just have a few minutes now, I will step to another, another game because I brought so many games. Just sorry, but I will go forward. I will go forward. Yes, and with the, the another guessing from social communication. You say, hello class, how are you feeling today? I'm fine, thank you. Everybody has to be fine. Poor those ones who are not fine. They will say they are. We only teach them they're fine. Isn't it? Well, let's teach them more adjectives. Well, here. I can have them repeat. I can make a presentation, practice. But we can make sentences. Again, in a mind game. Right? I could say... What could you think about? You could say, she, she is nervous or scared. Can you see we're learning verb to be? Can you see we're learning how to make sentences with verb to be? And she or he. We show the colors. Yes? Please, try to mime in pairs. Yes, you mime one feeling and your friend guesses. I mime for you. If you, if you, yes, please start miming the way you feel or supposing, please. Yes, 
Yes, you can say you are, you can say he is, she is, ok? São dez minutinhos, né? Eu já vou tentar finalizar para que se alguém tiver pergunta. Remember, complete sentences. He is or she is. He is or she is. Yes, you can say you are, she is, he is. Got it. Making sentences. Alright, we clap, 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 we stop, stop, stop. I wish we clap, we stop, stop, stop. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, uh, I'll be, uh, so many things we have to skip. Well, this was real activities, contextualized practice, how to make young learners make sentences. I am Lilian Martinelli. I am a teacher at Rio Branco. I've been teaching there for 11 years. Yes. Uh, and I am very happy for being together with you because I've been you participating. Maybe I've been showing something so simple, but no. I think that no. simple practices no. that make learners yeah. uh, be successful produce yeah. sentences. Okay? It was very nice. Yeah. I must thank you and open for questions. All right? Yes, commentaries or questions, Portuguese or English or in Spanish. No more than that, please. Uh, All right? No more than that. Please. Mm -hmm. Rio Branco is a, a traditional and innovative <laughs> school that uh, has been in São Paulo for 70 years, in Avenida Higienópolis, and has been in Cotia Granja Viana for 40 years. Yes, it's a regular school. Yes, yes, Colégio Rio Branco, it's a regular school. Yes, some famous people have studied there, like uh, Antonio Fagundes, Ayrton Senna, Dan Stubach, so, so many people have... Lilian, no, Lilian, no. Yes? No, no, okay, no, no right. <laughs> famous people, we're talking about famous people, we're talking about us, of course. Right? Anybody else? All right. Have you studied abroad? Well, in fact, I have taken a master degree at Univers Universidade de São Paulo, and I have studied but for a few months abroad. The most of the work I did, uh, if you search Lilian de Melo Fernandes Martinelli, you are going to find the thesis of master degree. It's online. Everybody can download. And then I talk about pedagogical intervention, really in a contextualized practice. Everything is to be contextualized. All right? And I've participated in two books. Uh, as an organizer and uh, writing articles. There is a book about uh, Atividade, uh, Social Cultural Activity Theory, right? Ati uh, then I cannot, 
say the, is the there thing. A book? There is a book. Yes, yes, yes. If, when you Google, maybe you will find it. All right. Yes. And I'm very happy that you are here today. Yes, Isaac. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.